Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this the way that I stored and now store my drills. When I first started working on diamond paintings, this is how I used to store them. Sorry, printed numbers off to put on them instead of just the white labels. So they're actually color coded with the labels as well. So this is how I used to originally store them in the Tic Tac containers. And every time I got a painting, I would actually put them in here. And then when I took them out to put them in my other case, I would put them empty in facing backwards to hold that slot. I put some drills on the top of the container of the color that was in the container. And this is what I originally started doing. Every time I got a painting, I'd open it, I'd put it in these containers. But then I started noticing how there was colors that didn't match even though they had the same DNC. I didn't realize that, you know, like paint based off the batch, your color can be slightly different. So I started just putting both of those colors in here next to each other. So I'd have two of the same or similar shades of color with the same DMC and I just put the DMC number on both of them. Like, like these two. To me, they look like different colors. So I just put each of them in their own container. But then I realized I didn't know which painting was supposed to have this one and which one was supposed to have this one. And if I used the wrong color and didn't have enough, because some of them have less than the others, it was going to be a problem. So I switched from doing that and started doing it similar. This one, obviously, I had printed my labels off where I hadn't previously. And some of these I have little stickers on because that was for the painting I was working on. But I started printing the name of the painting that I have in here. So some of them go to multiple paintings and I have multiple labels on the sides. I'm not sure which ones to show you, but that way if I had two, like this one, there you go. This goes to both of those two paintings. They have this exact same gray. So this should do two paintings. Um, that one. So if I had two that were the same number but looked like different colors, I could then just look on the side and be like, oh, this is the brown that goes to that painting. This is the brown that goes to that painting, you know? So that's how I did it where I could sort all my drills in here, didn't have to worry about organizing bags or anything like that, and I just grab the DMC number out. I need it for the painting. And that works pretty well if you want to sit there and put you know, the ID code for each of your paintings on the drill container with the number. And that way, if the shade's slightly different, you know you grab the right bottle. That one works pretty well. Again, I upgraded them from this container to this container. I also, in these containers, changed the way that the containers were in here versus what they came ordered. And I put this foam board to keep my rows straight. I think originally when you order these, they come facing forward or something, and this way, I think I fit more, and they're a tighter fit, so they don't slide around much at all, but they're still pretty easy to get out since you can just kind of grab at a tab. So this is not a bad way to do it if you want to open all your drills as you get your paintings and store them, and again, you can upgrade this to a bigger container like this. But again, if you're worried about the color code being the same and the color palette being slightly different, you'd have to mark which painting each number comes from. So that would get to be a long list on each of these, possibly. Or you could just say, you know, this is the default one, and if any of them have this shade, then you'll list it. You know, but that would be a, a little annoying to do, but could you could do it. This is 
just like a few of these containers I put it in this I put cardboard around the edges to make it square because it kind of has indents in it and I got really thin wood cut to separate my bottles so this has really thin pieces of wood down in here to separate the bottles After these, I started doing a little bit differently. I started not opening all my drills every time I got a painting. So I started working on something to store leftover drills. And kind of like the boxes that you see people do, I started making my own little like filing system in one of these containers. I printed off the color and put on the index cards so every number is in here. I then put the bag of drills in its place. I also bought one of those packs that have a little bit of every color so that I could kind of color match, but that I never ended up doing. And then I just started putting these labels on the bags because originally I didn't have the labels on and I thought well what if they fall I'm not going to know which color they are just because of the code here so I put the code on the bag but I figured this way I have the, the default colors for everything and then I could put my leftovers in with these guys and that was my original thought and a project that I kind of stopped on before I finished I think because like I said I was putting those stickers on it and I didn't finish putting those stickers on it so those are the stickers here. And then I switched from this to thinking, well, I'd like a bigger bag to store them in. And I found this at um, a secondhand store for really cheap. And it's like, oh, that looks nice. That looks like it could be a good drill container. So again, this is new and not finished. But these are some of the paintings I've finished. And again, just a card stock with the sticker on it and the drills. I then put the name of all the paintings that have that color on the back where I tried. My printer was messing up. I didn't get to print these labels off. And I said, screw it. I guess I'm not putting what painting they came from. I was going to originally put what painting they came from on the back. So if the painting ever lost the drill, I knew exactly which color variety it needed to go on there and stuff but yeah well my printer broke it started bugging me and I'm just like screw it so some of them have the the painting and which number but some of them don't so that's what I started doing for storing them now and this is how I've been storing my drills for my finished paintings but I easily could put them in this, which is basically the same thing, just smaller bags. Or I could easily mix them with any of this. Because again, I don't think doing this is wrong. Some people don't mind if two codes are the same and the shade's different. They just mix them. That's not me. But I don't know if you'd really notice in the painting. Some people say it gives it more depth to mix them even if the shades are slightly different I don't know it's not me I definitely wouldn't want to do it halfway through a painting because I feel like I would notice the difference between the one half and the other half of the painting but putting your finished drills and your finished canvas and something like this and you don't have to worry about labeling it or labeling the painting with the drills and something like this isn't the wrong way to do it I mean everybody has their own way people have different like filing cabinet style things that they do too. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do this where they uh, put the labels on the side and open all their canvases before working on them. So I don't know that's something I think I've done that I haven't seen anybody else say or do. And again if I were to actually have done this method normally I would put them all in a big container like that 
use these containers to put the ones in that I'm working with. These blanks here will flip backwards in the slot of the color I need. But I made these ones when I had like four or five paintings. So this actually is only for the four or five paintings I have. And again, I did name all the paintings on it. And then the symbols right now are for... I do believe this was actually the bear painting that I quit doing, which you'll see in my stash video. So I believe those are what these symbols are that I wrote on here. And these symbols should be a sticker that I can peel off and put a symbol for the next painting on it. Again, there's no right way to do any of this. You do it how it works for you, and if that's trying five, six different ways, it's trying five or six different ways till you find something that works for you. Again, do what works for you, how much work you want to put into it, how organized you want to be, how accurate you want to be with your colors. So to add to it, this is how I'm now storing the drills that I don't open for paintings. I guess I no longer open them. I just print off the label. I tend to use this number to look it up, but I could easily use this number or the name. And I just put a picture for each one on here. And on my sheet, I have this row labeled and the row below this labeled and this drawer labeled. And that's how I do that for those. I have the dresser drawers I put them in or some fabric cubes. So for fabric cubes, I found out I kind of like these cubes and I would like to build a shelf that will fit these cubes in it. The paintings are a little bit taller than the cube as a two row stack, but they don't take up much space and you can easily this way um, have multiple shelves with multiple letters. And so there's two rows, a top row and a bottom row in this. And then again, I just printed off the picture, the numbers, what painting it is in my collection, the name, and then the canvas code. Again, this number is the easiest way for me to find it on my um, files, the picture on my files, because that's a number order. And then after that, the name which I try not to reuse. And obviously the code for the specific canva canvas. I still tag all of them too, so I can look them up by any tag. Like this pinhead is gonna be under horror, it's gonna be under human, it's gonna be under a few other categories. And then you got the cad and the yarn basket tiny black and white tiger so it will come up if I type tiny tiny in because it says tiny but it will also come up if tiny wasn't typed in it because I have it marked as a tiny painting on the worksheet and tagged the photo as a tiny painting so I have these like I said it'd be nice to actually build a shelf that fits these nicely but right now I just have two sitting on top of each other because the shelf I have built for the larger containers and I could just put these in the larger container but then you have a stack of like four paintings deep and I thought this was better and for those ones since they don't have a shelf right now I just kind of have like blue top blue bottom because that one I just showed you was blue I then also have brown and cream I know which cubby it's in and I know it's either the top container or the bottom container and then I just have to look through the top row and bottom row because unlike the drawers, the rows kind of slide into each other more because the uh, fabric has more give to it. So there's that. Then of course, I've shown this in a few videos, the book that I use when I'm working on a painting. I was using cardstock, but now I just cut the top off a bag and put it in a Ziploc bag. It kind of holds its shape enough that way that I don't need to worry about cutting the cardstock. And I used to print this off, but I just, I'm handwriting it on there now even though I don't like it. Sometimes I still print it off. It just depends on my mood. So this is how I dive and paint out of. And how I used to dive and paint out of them was either the Tic Tac containers or these 
little containers and I just keep the bags like this, fill up the container. Um, with this one, I put all the crap drills in a square that I wasn't using. But with this, you should have now seen every way I have kept my drills or keep my drills now. So hopefully some of you guys like that. Uh, again, how you want to organize them, what works for you is something you got to figure out. There's multiple ways you can try. I like working out of this book with them like this, and I like storing my extra in the other bags in a filing cabinet type system. But the Tic Tac containers were my favorite for a while, and I could just still pour these into the Tic Tac containers when I'm done or to work on them that way, but I don't know why I switched over to the bags. That's how I switched over though, and so that's what I've been using.